Hello everybody, my name is Lauren Wilson, and in this video I'm going to be doing a critique on an old painting of mine. This is actually the first digital painting that I had ever done, and in this video I'm first going to be doing a critique of the piece, and I'm going to be painting over what I feel like needs to be corrected with the piece, and then later on I'm also going to be doing a complete paint over of the piece, so I'm going to completely redo it in a way that I would paint it now as compared to before. And now we're going to go into the critique part. So I'm starting off by desaturating the painting. Uh, I have the grass way too green. It makes the painting look unrealistic and a little bit more cartoonish when you have grass that's saturated all over the place. You might be able to get grass to that saturation in very small places where the sun is hitting it directly, but for the most part you really don't see grass that, that green or saturated. Um, yeah, so I'm just going in and I am making it more of a realistic color or realistic grass tone. Another thing about the painting is that there isn't that much um, change in atmosphere that I have. Um, so I'm going to be going in and I'm going to be adding more cooler, lighter tones to the background to help push it back because that's what helps things to be pushed farther back in paintings. You want to have cooler, lighter tones towards the background to tell your eye that the object is farther away. And then you also want darker, warmer tones towards the foreground to help bring whatever object is there forward. And that really helps to allow people to immerse themselves into a painting that really allows people to want to go forward into a painting and draw them in. And it kind of has a feeling that there's a world inside the painting instead of just being a flat object. So yeah, I just selected the area out that I wanted to make lighter and I'm just filling it in to add in the atmosphere in a more controlled way. And this is really gonna help out with this kind of wall effect that I have going on as well, adding this more of a background. And it's also much, has this kind of tunnel effect going on as well, um, where everything's kind of going in towards that one spot in the background. And that doesn't add a lot of interest to the painting. It makes it look very singular um, and kind of walled off. And you can see it um, by, yeah, if we add this one, because, yeah, you can see how it is very tunneled looking. And it doesn't add a lot of um, difference to the painting, and it makes it uninteresting looking. So yeah, I'm just going in and I am adding more of the background to take away from that tunnel effect that I have going on. And again, I'm just selecting out the part that I want to have it be a little bit more sharp looking. Another part about the painting is that the rock pillars that I have are pretty much all the same size and shape, and that really makes the painting look very repetitive um, and uninteresting. Um, a lot of times new artists will do that where you'll have a piece in the painting and you're like, wow, that looks really good. Um, you're like, I really want to like incorporate this throughout the whole painting, I really want it to like follow through, um, but it ends up making the painting look less interesting by getting it on there. And I also have this magical line going on, which is also a thing that new artists do. We like to put things in lines because we're trying to get it to this focal point back here, and it just winds up everything going into a line and being uninteresting, and it doesn't add a lot of difference. So right now I'm going in and I'm adding different shapes to the painting to take away from that line effect that I have. And 
and I'm adding more atmosphere to the painting to help put things into perspective more. I'm also adding in more of a layering effect to also add depth to the painting, which is a really important part to add depth to a painting. Um, you want to have different layers and things if you want the painting to feel bigger and that there's more distance between things. You want to add um, kind of like a lighter tone behind like a darker object and that really helps to kind of show the eye that there's distance between these two things. And I'm also darkening up the highlights in the foreground because they were a little bit too light. They were the same light back there. And here I'm adding that layered effect to that rock right there to show that there's distance between the one in front of it. Now I'm just working on the other side. Um, and as you can see, the, the side that I've been working on has a lot more depth to it and has a lot more um, interest. And it looks like there's more of a world going on instead of being just like a singular phenomenon, which is what it looked like before. It pretty much looked like this was the only thing in existence and there wasn't that much going on besides this one area. Another issue with the painting is that there's a lot of detail up in the foreground, um, pretty much the same as the, the focal point I have in the midground, um, and that really takes away interest from the focal point and it makes the painting look very busy, and there's a lot of unnecessary detail that you don't need. Um, so yeah, I'm just going in and I'm blurring that out and I'm making it a little bit more darker. Another issue is the perspective that I had on the ropes. Um, they weren't really that correct, and so I'm going to be going in and fixing up the ground level, or the cloud level I have right there, um, to make the painting more stable and more correct. Another issue I had was that I added way too much detail to the rope before it was necessary, and so that made the painting look very stiff. Um, and I could have accomplished a, a better effect if I just suggested that the rope was there instead of going in and adding so much unnecessary detail. Um, but yeah. I'm just darkening up the foreground a little bit. I probably should have used uh, more of a, a warmer tone to do that and a little bit darker, but it's all right. <laughs> I wanted that spot right there to look like it was going down farther, that the clouds were kind of up higher and that the ground goes down a lot further, but it didn't really <laughs> end up doing that. It looked more like a puddle, but um, so yeah, I'm just, I went over that and I fixed that as well. I'm fixing up the perspective here on these rock formations because they're a little bit wonky. Um, they don't really fit with the rest of the perspective. I'm also adding in a little bit of mountainous things um, to add more interest to the background as well. going to be going into the um, the paint over part of the painting 
and I've already started on a sketch of that so I'm going to be jumping back into that and I will see you all in a little bit. painting I think I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward to the final piece um, I'm just gonna be doing a whole bunch of little details and it's gonna take up a whole bunch of time and it'll probably get a little bit boring um, so yeah and here is the final painting um, if I wanted to have this painting be more of like a finished piece, I'd probably put a little bit more detail into it. I'd probably sharpen up these mountains over here and make these clouds a little bit more realistic looking. But for the purpose of this video, it's this is good enough. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really liking the perspective that I have on it. It really makes the mountains look very large and gigantic, which is what I wanted. Um, I still incorporated the light coming in behind the one mountain type of effect, which I wanted to keep from the other piece because I really like that. And I incorporated the human aspect down here. Also adds like, kind of like a focal point to draw your interest downward. Um, I would probably add a little bit more of the bridges now that I'm looking at it. I would probably add a little bit more interest to the piece as well. Um, and, but, yeah, I like the, it has like this effect going on, kind of adds that curve to it, which draws your eye, um, in and around the painting, which is a good thing to have. Um, <laughs> I kind of like this rock thing going on here, um, I'm not really sure if that's like what rocks normally do. Uh, well, maybe they do. I don't know. I'm not really that much of a landscape person. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this, this rock here turned out. It was kind of one of those like happy mistake type things. I was doing it, I was like, ooh, wow. Yes, we should keep that. <laughs> and yeah, that was really cool. And it kind of comes into the foreground. Yeah, I just really like that part right there. It's really nice. Um... Yeah, but overall, I'm super happy with it. It does have like a different feel to it than the original one did, but I like how it's much more realistic looking. It kind of fits more in with my style that I do as well. Um, I didn't add the rope things from the other one. Um, I kind of wanted to rely more on like kind of like a magical effect of having them float around and stuff. Um, and I was afraid it'll look a little bit too busy having all the ropes in there. 
but it could also look pretty cool. I don't know, maybe for like a project for another day would be cool to kind of incorporate that idea and to see what that would look like. Okay, well, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful. If it was, let me know. Uh, let me know if you would like more videos like this. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I hope it was helpful. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.